Dr. Ken Fraser. He joins me from New South Wales, Australia, to elaborate and explain a little bit further the current challenges the government of Afghanistan go through, for that matter, the Taliban. Welcome back, Dr. Fraser. It's great to have you back. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be back talking with you. Can you elaborate a little bit more on the challenges the Taliban now go through in terms of establishing a credible government after or the transition after occupation? Uh, well, there are a number of um, very serious challenges facing not just the Taliban, but all the people of Afghanistan. Um, some of them are challenges that all governments face in the, when they uh, win a war, when they, when they take over some place, um, because it's uh, an unsettled time. People don't, are not sure what's going to happen. Uh, they have to shift rapidly from a war footing uh, to a civilian administration footing, which is a, a very, can be a very difficult thing to do. Um, there's typically not very much money around unless they have uh, outside support. Um, and there can also be uh, infighting that breaks out in amongst the uh, group that's taken over. Um, and there are a number of other difficulties um, the Taliban themselves are facing some very, very serious uh, difficulties in Afghanistan. There are more than 5 million people who have been displaced uh, from their homes. It's, winter's coming on. Um, it's going to get cold. There's not very much food. The, uh, what had been supplied by the occupation forces um, has simply disappeared. So that was a lot of uh, money. Uh, food, fuel for cars, power generation, all that sort of thing. There's just the massive amounts of money that we're not really aware of uh, a lot of the time that it costs just to run uh, a city, for example, or uh, and certainly for a, a whole country. The Taliban were in control of several areas around the country and have been for quite a long time. So they do have experience uh, with with uh, civilian administration, but they are facing these these twin prospects of uh, a massive displacement and a drying up of funds. Some of this will be resolved by uh, them obtaining sources of revenue from other places. So uh, from China, for example, and from Pakistan, um, they'll be getting assistance from those places. I think the Chinese government is very keen to make friends with the, uh, with the uh, Taliban. Um, so that's one source of uh, stability. And this is the thing that's, that uh, is really going to be the, the two big challenges are feeding everybody and housing them uh, and st remaining stable because the whole place is very diverse. Uh, the Taliban itself is a, is a diverse uh, organisation. Um, and so there's a problem of falling to infighting if, there's, if there are power struggles or uh, local um, top men, warlords, uh, want to uh, carve out their own little uh, power uh, regions uh, where they control things, then that might come into uh, clashes with the Taliban. Um, I'm not sure what's happening in the Panjshir Valley at the moment, but I think they were pretty much, uh, that was the last pocket of resistance and has been taken over. Uh, so those are, those are the main difficulties that, that strike uh, me as a problem. How big do you think is the threat of ISIS in Afghanistan? They say it according to Al Jazeera just very recently, actually today in the news, they said, well, they basically, you know, are able to contain them. Um, can you elaborate a little bit on the threat of ISIS or IS, Islamic State? Yeah, well, it's, it's probably ISK, the Islamic State, uh, Wilayat of uh, Khorasan which is what they call that, uh, these wilayats that they have, it's like a governorate or a province uh, of their uh, putative K 
caliphate. So that certainly is a problem. It's uh, something we've seen bombings and uh, suicide bombings, um, not terribly many, I don't think, but they, they do exist. People who are devoted to the Islamic State uh, are in the country and they are being also recruited. Um, it's kind of interesting from a Western point of view because we tend to lump all these people in together as if they're all just Islamic fanatics. Um, this is not necessarily the case. ISIS uh, or the ISK and the Taliban are not necessarily on the same page. In fact, they definitely are not. But, um, the Taliban are very keen at the moment to settle things down. They want to uh, have peace. Uh, they want to have a, a solid, uh, unified government uh, so that they can start receiving and distributing aid. And so the uh, members of the IS and the people that they'll be recruiting uh, in what they call Khorasan will be just seeking to disrupt those, um, those flows of cash and, uh, and supplies on the one hand and of uh, power on the other. So they would be trying to make it hard for uh, the Taliban to recruit police. Uh, they can do a whole lot of things that uh, the Taliban themselves used to do to the occupying forces. The ISK can do just the same sorts of things to them. Suicide bombers in recruitment lines, uh, suicide bombers or not, or uh, improvised uh, explosive devices in uh, food uh, distribution centres, all that kind of thing that can make people afraid, uh, that can disrupt um, any kind of governmental uh, control that's coming from the Taliban. So uh, it remains to be seen how much of a threat this is, but it definitely is a problem that they'll have to deal with. Uh, one way or another. Are you this far surprised positively in the way the situation unfolds in Afghanistan? Uh, I'm not particularly surprised. I'm in, we're probably not getting terribly much information from there at the moment. Uh, I, so I haven't, I haven't been particularly startled by anything that's happened. There's a process now of settling down and I'd say that's what the Taliban wants to do is to settle uh, as much as possible. But it, again, it's very difficult for them to do that with 5 million people. Um, they have to care about the people. If they don't, they'll have resistance and they'll have difficulty uh, controlling people. Although obviously um, people who have no food or money or uh, enough to feed their children uh, don't pose all that much of a threat except that they can be recruited by other groups such as the ISK or outside uh, influences. So the um, other Western powers, Pakistan, India, the China, obviously Russia, they'll all be uh, competing for attention and competing for influence in Afghanistan. So that's uh, what they'll be, what the Taliban need to do is settle everything down, start controlling these sources of revenue, um, start tracking down uh, any threats to their power, um, and, and that's going to be a difficult problem for them um, in the near term. Uh, as far as the medium term or, or longer, uh, it's very difficult to say. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be betting any money on anything really. Uh, the Taliban will be in control, I think, for some time, you know, just going back on my own uh, promise there and, and making a general prediction that I can't see any threat to the Taliban that's bigger than uh, a few suicide bombers going off here and there, which is obviously a very serious thing, but it's not enough to disrupt their uh, government. So, and over time, though, it might uh, become a big problem for them. But just at the moment, they're firmly in control. Uh, but whether they can actually use that control to spread uh, economic benefits and security benefits to the people, that's what they need to do. And whether they can do that soon enough. Uh, obviously, the fighting season uh, will end soon if it hasn't already. Uh, so not much will happen now as people try to just get through the winter uh, and keep themselves alive. 
until the next fighting season starts again in the spring. Um, so that'll be the time, I think, to watch. It depends what you're interested in. If you're interested in people's welfare, well, the next few months are going to be very nasty. Uh, if you're interested in the political situation and the stability of the government, uh, it's probably you'll be wanting to look at what's happening in spring when the, when the snow thaws and the fighting season begins. Many people in, in Afghanistan have known nothing else but guerrilla warfare for 40 years. That's a very long time. It's a time that people can grow up from being children into being hardened, trained, uh, battle-hardened fighters. And that's all they know how to do is fight. And so the danger is that they'll find a reason to continue to do that because that's the only way they know how to live. Always a pleasure to have you on the show, Dr. Ken Fraser. Yeah. Thank you very much. Dr. Ken Fraser. <laughs>